Hey folks, Raif Derazi here, and today I want to share with you a short autobiography of a long-term survivor's experience living with HIV. His name is Phil Zarecki, and a friend of his reached out asking if I wouldn't mind sharing his story, um, which was originally a speech put together for World AIDS Day 2023, and I said, sure, consider it done. There's no video, it's just audio, and at the end of Phil's audio, I'll share my future plans for this type of content, and I look forward to gauging your interest, or lack thereof. We'll see. Without further ado, Phil Zarecki. For over 35 years, I have been fighting the virus that causes AIDS. I first tested positive for HIV in the spring of 1986. At that time, a diagnosis like that was considered a death sentence. In 1986, the only medicine available was AZT. However, the side effects of that drug were as destructive to the body as the virus itself. I knew then that I had to figure out how to deal with this new terminal diagnosis. I did this by reading all kinds of spiritual books, the Bible, of course, and also books on Eastern religions. I even read a Seth book that referred to God as All That Is. I began meditating and practicing yoga. During those early years, whenever I had blood work done, the results were mostly encouraging. As one doctor put it, if I didn't know you were HIV positive, I wouldn't know that you had the virus. But I did. My fairly good health lasted until 1996. By then, my body had slowly deteriorated to the point where I needed medication. That's when I began taking a combination of three drugs, often referred to as the Tricombo Cocktail. I was able to maintain stable good health for the next four years because of this medication. In the year 2000, I made the move from California back to Pittsburgh, where I grew up. The reason I moved back was to help my parents, who were both dealing with their own medical problems. Dad had cancer, and Mom was susceptible to strokes. They both were forced to confront their own deaths. That's when I realized that death is around us, always. Whether we want to admit it or not, whether we want to talk about it or not, whether we try to even ignore it, death is still there. Right now, if you look straight ahead without turning your head or eyes, try to see that dark figure in the corner of your eye. That's him, the avenging angel of death, and he is always there. I realized then that I had to accept the fact that death is a part of my life. Sooner or later, I would meet the Grim Reaper but I knew it was in my power to delay that meeting as long as possible. Since moving back home to Pittsburgh, I had been working as a temporary office worker and I could no longer afford my medication. In 2005, after five years of taking care of my dad, I found myself sitting next to my mother waiting for the doctor to come talk to us after the operation. That's when the doctor explained to us that they couldn't remove all the cancer inside my dad without removing half of his organs. Dad would be sent home to die. I was shocked by this news. Mom surprised me when she said that she and Dad had talked about this possibility and they both agreed that they had lived longer lives than they had expected to and that they were both ready to leave. She was handling the news better than I was. When I looked at her, I could see that she was at peace with this news. Mom was able to live on another three years, even though she had lost her partner of almost 60 years. I don't remember them being separated for one night. In 2008, after three years, she finally succumbed to a stroke, went into a coma for two weeks, and then passed on. Late one evening, a few weeks after Mom's funeral, I experienced uncontrollable shaking and shivering, convulsions that I could not stop. This went on for maybe 30 minutes or more. I realized then how serious my medical condition was. I prayed to all that is to either stop the shaking or take me now. 
The next day, I made it to the county health offices in Pittsburgh. After taking a series of tests, I wasn't prepared for the results. It seems that not only was I diagnosed as diabetic, but my T-cells were so low that I was no longer just HIV positive. I had full-blown AIDS. The doctor looked at me and said that he wasn't sure I would survive all the medications needed to get me healthy again, and that I might not survive until the end of the year. I decided that I would do everything I could to try and prevent that from happening. After changing my diet and taking many medications, I could slowly feel myself getting stronger. That took several years. Eventually, my numbers began moving in the right direction. My T-cells kept increasing, and my viral load kept getting smaller and smaller. Finally, in the year 2020, when I looked for the number representing the amount of virus in my body, I could hardly believe what I saw. A zero. The amount of virus in my system was zero. Temporarily, I had won. The virus would never be completely gone from my body, but an undetectable amount meant that I could no longer spread the virus to anybody else. In the end, death always wins, but the important thing right now is that I'm still here. My name is Phil Zarecki, and I'm a longtime survivor. Thank you for listening to my story. All right, I hope you enjoyed hearing about Phil's journey living with HIV. So about my future plans, so about my future plans that I teased in the beginning of this video, I have a sneaking suspicion that besides Phil Zarecki, there are a lot of long-term survivors living with HIV who want their story to be told, who want to share what they experienced and experienced today at the height of the AIDS epidemic and through the 90s, 2000s, and on through today with others. I believe there are many long-term survivors living with HIV who have lost those people who would understand what they went through and consequently feel alone, ostracized even, forgotten, or just lacking a sense of connection and understanding, a sense of community. Because of this, I think it would be really valuable to create a podcast that is dedicated to long-term survivors telling their stories of their diagnoses, surviving with HIV, and what their journey has been like. I would allow this to be a longer format, so like 45 minutes maybe to an hour and a half, depending. It would include the video format as well, so I would have the audio um, in locations where it's only audio, but then on YouTube you could always watch it as well. And I would also have the opportunity to interject, ask questions, and dive deeply with this person. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Is this something you would listen to or watch? Are there people in your life you think would really appreciate something like this? Let me know. As always, like this video, subscribe, hit that bell so you get a notification every time a new video comes out. And please share this with anyone who might find value in this type of content. Until next time, cheers.